the things that I want by true talent, the smoke, the whiskey, for the sun to shine, I want to sleep to forget, to change the past, my reputation back, killer buff Santa, license to play dead by daylight unbothered, right there, more than anything, I wanted the hate to stop. Dead by Daylight content creator True Talent is seen as a villain in the community. This video will challenge their perception through a 95% survivor mains analysis. However, while making this video, there's been an update where True said it takes so bad that the villain perception is now justified. Okay, so anyway, another reason True is... Gotcha. True says that when most people criticize him and call him bad or a villain, they never give actual examples, save for one or two valid criticisms. The animosity towards True actually stems from misplaced origins, which will be revealed. Side note, the gameplay in the background will be True Talents to serve two purposes. One is to prove that True does play killer at the highest matchmaking rating, and the other purpose is to show the reason True has some of the opinions he has. Many DVD content creators and players have it out for True, and their echo chambers have created an association effect. Many popular and influential DVD YouTubers and streamers have a bad view of True, which then influences their viewers into thinking there must be a good reason for them to look down on and avoid True too. True wasn't always an angel, though if pressed for an answer, some people say that True is a racist, ableist, homophobe, or other labels. This is completely false for the following reasons. The supporting evidence people have for True Talent being racist. First comment on channel, never commented before, all 10 of them or whatever it was uh, and i checked all the profiles and they were all indian don't know why so i was like who sent all you indians like i don't understand why all of you are indian and you're all saying horrible things this feels like someone sent them right so who sent you this is usually clipped out of context and though with context is it racist no Racism is when a group of survivors saw my same profile country as Ireland, despite me never being born in, raised in, or going to Ireland, and then proceeded to bring up the Irish potato famine to insult me. I'm not even Irish and I was offended. True was not racist, though his comment could have been worded better. True is often labeled as homophobic. The best evidence of this is True reacting to a video of gay content creator Hydro leaving their Fog Whisper program. This isn't evidence because True never judged Hydro for their orientation and actually empathized with the harassment that the content creator faced. If True was homophobic, he wouldn't have platformed the gay creator or would have started acting differently when finding out the content creator is gay. People literally throw around the label homophobic when talking about True without literally a shred of proof. There is no evidence of True being transphobic either. True doesn't judge orientation and labeling True as homophobic or transphobic is legal slander, slander being a reoccurring theme True is subjected to. True is labeled as an ableist, and the reason for this is a clip where True makes a funny voice imitating someone. My memory is stop it. Can you stop being so passive aggressive? Fuck! Oh. But I for your da ba 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 da ba da da. Shut the fake passive aggressive prick. There's dog too. Just some passive aggressive prick just waiting to like say something like, I'm for you, you. Yeah, I'm fine, you mean you. It's like, shut the f They've literally got nothing else better to do. They really don't. They really don't. Bye, 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 boy, you dead, bitch. Yeah, boy, you dead, bitch. Yeah, you're gonna bring this back up. You're gonna bring this back up right now. Just to be an asshole. Were you not a child once? Did you not make voices to imitate others? If others and you did, does that mean you should be cancelled for something you did as a child? If not, then should everyone only use your opinion on when someone is too old for it to be life ruining? Should everyone consult you to resolve the trolley problems in the world? Did you want me to shut up ages ago because you got the point? Good. If you're not convinced, here's a clip of a fog whisper doing a mocking voice too, with everyone accepting it, because it's nothing offensive. It's tunneling. Do you think tunneling is bad or good? Do you think Jen Rush is bad or good? Do you think blah, blah, blah? How come True was cancelled for it when the other creator rightfully wasn't? True made the silly voice was the day he got kicked out of Dead by Daylight's Fog Whisper program. The Fog Whisper program is where content creators receive special privileges for endorsing the game, which True helped grow popular and was loyal to from the start. The developers never gave True the reasons he got kicked out of the Fog Whisper program. 
This situation has invaluable insight into True's personality and will be expanded upon later. If you call True a fascist, then don't pause the video, you will have 5 seconds to answer what the definition of a fascist is. Go! If you got the definition correct, then don't you think it's a little weird comparing a gaming content creator to dictators? If you call True a fascist for only accepting his opinions is fact, this will be proven false, so the label is inaccurate. True is actually okay having discussions with people. True's temperament is he's curious, open-minded, likes to think critically, and is part of the Thinking Persons DBD Content Creators group. These traits are to his detriment, as explained in the upcoming personality section. There is an event that definitely puts True's character into question. It's potentially career ruining, that is not an exaggeration. Before you say how others wouldn't be negatively perceived or looked down on for saying what True said here, that's completely wrong, it isn't a case of True being unfairly targeted. Before you say how obviously True doesn't have the worst perspective of this situation, do remember that people are both bad and good and you'd be surprised. People who look normal on the surface can have problematic values or commit bad actions. There's far less normal people in the world than you think and content creators are not your friends, you don't really know them. This is a content warning for assault, so if you'd like to avoid it, when you see the yellow circle in the top right, mute the video and focus on the yellow circle. When it disappears is when it's safe to unmute and watch normally. Okay, so on Twitter, there was a Reddit screenshot where a man detailed that he loves it when his wife goes out at night and provides her drink money in hopes she gets drunk because she's a freak when she's drunk. The husband very much looks forward to having sloppy intimacy with her. He ends the post saying that he wishes she would get drunk more often. Okay, what could True possibly reply with? Uh oh. Established already is that True has a very bad way of wording and communicating things sometimes, and this is certainly one of those instances. There's two sections here that people find rightfully problematic. One is, why do strangers have the right to say what a married couple can and can't do? And the second is, your wife or husband now? A question to True can be formed for each section. One question is, what did True presume the wife thought of the husband's desire to get her drunk to have sloppy intimacy? The second question is, does True believe that a spouse can't do a without consent action to the other? True's answers to these questions would help you make an informed decision of his character. The other character traits are positive or neutral, though this one is pretty problematic. Lastly, for a general overview of True, he often says that when people attack him or debate with him, they use logical fallacies. Logical fallacies are leaps of logic that lead to an unsupported conclusion, which is often true when people attack or debate true. At best, this is done unintentionally, while at worst, this strategy is employed manipulatively. True states multiple times the only reason he knows what logical fallacies are is because of the DBD community. You got everyone fucked up. You got everyone fucked up. If the reason a graphic designer turned full-time streamer knows what a logical fallacy is, is because of video game arguments. This is a game, not an election. It's not that deep. The surface level has been examined through True's character. Now to dive deeper and look at True's personality to understand him a little more. True is very competitive in nature and hates losing, as he said multiple times. This is partially the reason for his divisive opinions or takes, which will be analyzed later. True started from and has a passion for fighting games, which are some of the most competitive games around, and said his preferences for watching content stem from a competitive perspective. Does this mean True is bad? Is it bad to have preferences? Personally wouldn't take offense to True not watching my funny content, for example, because it wouldn't appeal to him. If you told True some more casual balancing opinions, and this is how he would react. Not tell you you're wrong and call you names. True views things in the vacuum of competitiveness with little regard to casual players because of his competitive nature and being in high MMR games constantly, which is draining. With that being said, his opinion shouldn't be entirely discounted, as he has some good opinions, and even the divisive ones are worth examining later to see the reason such a competitive person feels that way. Big Ego is a personality trait associated with True. This used to be true since he would repeat himself constantly and annoy people with how often he said he is good, though he has tempered himself greatly in this regard. 
True does still have a slight ego, though True claims this ego is defensiveness from constant harassment and belittlement he receives, which might be more accurate. This defensiveness is evidenced by this clip. You look very similar to Vecna in real life. I'm sure you really think that. <laughs> it's not corp. It's not. It's not corping about yourself or anything. Where a person in the chat is messing around and obviously doesn't mean True looks like a skinny purple on a live person. True took this personally and said it was a projection. If one endured enough hate as True does, they would probably think of many innocuous things being serious about them too. Even if True has an ego, it's nowhere near as bad as DBD competitive players. Killer Whale made a spectacular video about it, including showing times where DVD competitive players with big egos embarrass themselves. But in came an ultra meta nurse to stomp on them, and you can hear how upset it makes him, presumably because it's someone egoing in pubs. I'm playing against a turtle. Oh my god. King Morons, bro. Guys, I'll get ego from pubs because I can make it. Past Why is scale tilting? I 4k the terminal of Spinanus, look at me. Alright, fair enough. I mean, a meta nurse stomps like 99.99% of public lobbies. So, like Momo 7th, they challenge the nurse to a DBD League rule set match, where the nurse still gets a respectable 2k with 9 hook stages against the best team in comp DBD history. After which, Nightlight deleted the VOD, which is always a funny move when you accuse others of having an ego. Definitely a video worth watching. Related to Big Ego is the accusation that True doesn't compliment survivors ever. This is so false that this critique won't be dignified with clips. You can view and skim a recent True video or two and find examples of True complimenting survivors in a minute, I reckon. One critique that admittedly had some merit was that True only complained. This used to be true a bit ago and became grating, though True does this a lot less or has desensitized others, so this complaint no longer stands. True plays this game for a living at constantly high level, so complaining would be warranted, though everyone would be driven off from constant complaining, aye. The big critique that would explain some of the predicaments True finds himself in is that he is abrasive. For example, being a UK born boy, True says, what do you want about, when discussing with Twitch viewers. In many places of the world, this is seen as rude, while in the UK, it's a pretty standard figure of speech. The, who sent you Indians here, was bad wording, though even True acquiesces this. Know how there's some teachers or people that are strict and seen as uptight, while some people can look past the abrasiveness and see the value in how those divisive people are? That's true. If only True made his personality obvious, he should really clarify something like competitive blunt lads somewhere to make it obvious. Eh, I don't know. Summarizing the main complaints people have against True are that he has a big EO, complains, and can't admit when he's wrong. He used to be much more accurate long ago, though True has definitely improved over time. True probably realized these traits would drive people off. Ever hear the saying, you did this to yourself? That kind of applies to True. True likes to discuss with others, though often he finds himself in disputes with people on Twitter about his opinions. True could be Galileo, though unfortunately the people he's reasoning with are the 1600s church because they're on Twitter. To quote Terminator, <clears throat> It can't be bargained with, it can't be reasoned with, it doesn't feel pity, or remorse, or fear, and it absolutely will not stop. Ever until a whole DBD community is against True. True is open minded and curious to his detriment because of the disputes. There is a popular Twitter clip and it is used to show True is a bad player, that this is taken a bit out of context. Couldn't find this clip myself because I don't want to spend this much money to use Twitter without health side effects, though True provided his explanation here. You see? So I'm doing this on purpose. I wouldn't go for this. So this bloodless I'm getting right now, I'm doing this because I've already won the game and I'm using a strategy to kill her because she's on death hook. There you go. I've explained it all. There is one opinion that True has that is universally frowned upon and you're on the edge of your seat because you know what it is. Good news then, because you will definitely enjoy the analysis. The understanding of True's character and personality will provide insights into True having the opinions he has and his reasoning. One misconception people have about True is that he is a sweat that tunnels and camps for kills and wants the game to be this way. Hear it from True himself, his opinion on the matter. I'm pretty sure I said, um, 
if they base this game on kills, it's not going to be as fun. There's going to be more tunneling, more camping. People are going to be working out strategies on how to kill efficiently, which is going to, you know, force survivors to do gens quicker. One interesting development related to this is that Damarang 13 data analyzed their 500 solo queue games with an infographic and found that trials with the most balanced outcomes occurs when the first survivor is sacrificed with one Jenny left, that this occurred in less than 11% of matches. It looks like the potential ideal outcome for DBD matches is the game focusing on hooks over kills, while each individual game has the first sacrifice survivor at one Jenny left. This is only one person's solo queue experience, though it provokes reflection. Hooks over kills would provide more fun for everyone, while the most balanced outcome results in closer games and such styles of play would complement each other. Constant games of one side heavily winning over another side gets boring. It's the games with intense plays and close shaves that are remembered. An astute opinion of Trues that isn't talked about is his emphasis on rewarding killers to go after different survivors while behavior only punishes killers who tunnel in camp. Though the thought is good, scientifically speaking and reliably replicated through studies is the evidence that rewards or punishment both do harm in their own way. Studies in adults show they respond more to negative feedback. Remember how old barbecue and chili conditioned killers into hooking different people for more blood point rewards? Exactly. Rewarding killers for playing kinda would be worth experimenting with. If behavior wanted to make the game the best it could be, they'd be better off hiring psychological consultants to build the game better, respective to psychology, that this may do more harm than good. Look at social media for example. One controversial opinion True keeps that many people detest him over is his belief that people playing with friends in groups, known as survive with friends, should have slower generator speed penalty than people playing in solo queue randomly and with others since they don't like the idea of being punished to play with friends. But you're pushing, then you're pushing solo to swift level. It's just, it's like a mess. Swift will always be stronger, but you want to be pushing Swift lower. He won't say any... if, he, if he, He's talking about like making the game more competitive, viable and everything, but I bet he don't mention any debuff to Swift because it's taboo to talk about that. True's disparate analogies and perspectives can be combined to articulate the reasoning. True says that survivors can tunnel their objective too, as killers can tunnel survivors. Survivors can tunnel their objectives through rushing generators. It's known that behavior has reworked many perks in order to make them weaker, to nurse and blight, so they don't get out of hand, such as nerfing awaken awareness to prevent nurse from abusing it. If this kind of balancing is acceptable to avoid making nurse and blight too strong under certain conditions, then what reason would it be unacceptable to avoid making survivors too strong under certain conditions, which would be when playing together and using voice chat? It's worth noting people prefer nurse and strong killers receive reworks over the perks being changed instead. Though then, would this thought not be mirrored by saying that most people would prefer generators or survivor objectives be reworked rather than changing survivor with friends? Siding halfway with True and the other side on this one, personally believe that adding survivor base get kindred and allowing teammates to see each other's perks in solo queue which behavior might actually add soon because of this change staying even after the random perk game mode came out, is the way to go. The balance issue between solo queue and survive with friends is to reduce the discrepancy between the two to be as small as possible. The closer the baseline, the easier it is for behavior to balance around a uniforming game. True prefers nerfing survive with friends down to solo queue level. Putting solo to swift is not a good idea, I keep saying this. Yeah. Um, but they already kind of said in a, in a Reddit that that's not happening. Solo's the closest to balance the game has. While personal perspective is to buff solo queue up to survive with friends level, because this would result in a closer baseline, hypothetically speaking. When researching, I accidentally discovered an excellent point Tree makes. I think a lot of issues why I've come to DVD is because people are so obsessed with trying to get solo queue too swift. Like I said, why would you get, why would you try and make solo the same as Swift? Why would you not just try and make Swift go lower, right? Because if Swift is like this massive imbalance thing, which it is, it doesn't have to be. If you're bad, if you're bad at the game, the killer's fine. I'm talking if you're good, if you're a good foreman. If, if, if Swift is imbalanced, 
why would you grab solo and try and make that imbalanced, right? And also, when you do grab solo and make that imbalanced, don't you need to rebalance everything all of a sudden? Why don't you just keep solo and then push swift down and then start the balance going? Like, why don't you do it that way? It's way quicker. The problem with this is it's a catch-22. Remember when Survivor Qs at one point took a long time, no matter the time of day, because so many killers didn't want to play the game? The same thing would happen to people playing in groups who would probably find another game to play with friends, which would in turn drive down Dead by Day Let's Play in numbers. It's worth experimenting with, and easier to do a trial run of True's idea, especially since True and Ostarva and Spooky Loops and others said that behavior is constantly so busy that they don't address suggestions. So nerfing Survivor with Friends would be a more realistic and feasible solution for behavior. Personally, it's exciting if solo queue level was buffed to Survive with Friends level, and with everyone's super, no one will be. Imagine the killer buffs to compensate. Does the prospect of that not excite you? Does the prospect of that not leave you chomping at the bits wanting more? Oh, true. You sly dog. You got me monologuing. Many people who've played killer share the same opinion with true that generators go by too fast. Getting regression on gens, I think, is fine. I think more perks should have that instead of, you know, whatever they have. Uh, but blocking the gens so survivors can't get on them, I think, is uh, an issue. Because it's mean that the survivors just have to stand around doing nothing, which yeah. is weird. This is relevant because behavior nerfed many generator regression picks. This created a cobra effect or a tragedy of the common situation. Even if you've never heard of perverse incentive or tragedy of the commons before, likely would have predicted more players using gen regression picks after behavior and nerf them to compensate for the gen slowdown they lost. Is it the player's fault gen regression picks got nerfed? No, it's behavior's fault for avoiding the underlying issue even when told by many what the outcome will be otherwise. These patterns will keep repeating and metas will stay stale until behavior shakes things up to the point players don't feel the need to stack gen regression picks to keep up. Behavior has implemented interesting pick changes to the upcoming PTB, though, so maybe they have this in mind. True is made fun of for how critical he is of filters. Want to see True's thoughts on filters in 5 seconds? Look at this shit fucking... Dude, it's going... True states their filters provide advantages and says it's fine to use them for an advantage. What isn't fine is claiming one uses filter and none of the reasons being for an advantage. So are filters a competitive advantage? The visual manifestation of a toddler eating every crayon in a box and throwing it up on the screen for reasons other than for an advantage is implausible. Filters in stretched resolution are obviously for a competitive advantage. True says increasing killer FOV is a competitive advantage too, and does it himself. Killers do not deny higher FOV is an advantage. Survivors who use filters and say it's not for competitive reasons look insecure. They'd get more respect if they admitted the truth. The only exception where filters aren't a competitive advantage, and True would agree, is in cases of accessibility. JRM is a content creator who uses filters to aid his color blindness, so saying JRM has a competitive advantage because of this would be a bit daft. Okay, now for the opinion you've really been waiting on the edge of your seat for. True's possibly most controversial opinion is that the old spirit had counterplay, whereas the majority of people believe she didn't. So, who is right? The answer is at both sides, though one side ultimately prevails over the other. Here's Ardita's explanation. But the moment she started phasing, her hair would glitch a tiny bit for a couple of frames, likely something to do with animation blending and the spirit's model detaching from the player. The game would try to continue the animation from the exact same point from a seamless transition, but something wasn't quite 100% perfect, which caused a very subtle glitch with her hair. And just to reiterate, it was 100% a glitch and was in no way an intentional mechanic. And in fact, I think the glitch may have been tied to frame rate, so people playing on 60 FPS probably wouldn't have even had the glitch, but nonetheless, the pros were right. To review, Spirit's hair would glitch when phasing, which provided a visual clue for counterplay, although this looks like it was tied to frame rate, so inaccessible to majority of players, 
and it was a glitch that would be patched regardless. To those who believed Old Spirit had counterplay, if you were to sleep on a bridge overnight that was created from materials as strong as this counterplay argument, do you really think you would wake up fine the next morning? Through researching, true, it seems like he never correctly stated Old Spirit's counterplay. If there was ever a time for True to show that he can admit when he is wrong, now would be it. This is like True being handed the Olympic torch and being able to carry it on by admitting the flawed counterplay perception. If True were to keep his initial stance, then it would be like him taking the torch and throwing it purposefully into a lake. Hopefully this puts an end to the long debate. Now that you're caught up on True Lore, it's time to explain and analyze the recent situation where True became detested by many YouTube DVD survivor content creators. There's a lot to process there, but first, do you want to know something that makes someone look really bad? Behavior Interactive, the developer and publisher company behind Dead by Daylight, have received Canada's Best Managed Companies award four years in a row. The award examines and evaluates areas such as workplace culture as stated in this May 2024 press release. Do you know what June press release behavior released three weeks later? A statement embeds strategic changes for future growth, which includes firing almost 100 employees. Just under 3% or 40 employees of Behaviour's workforce was fired from December 2023 to January 2024 too. Want to know how it gets worse? The June press release was made public a day after the release of Dead by Daylight's collaboration with one of the most popular intellectual properties in the world, Dungeons & Dragons, when the majority of sales had been attained. It's 135 people, or 10% of the workforce, laid off in around half a year at Behaviour. Do you think it's warranted that Behaviour cut 10% of its total workforce in 2024, despite attaining one of the most popular IPs in a DLC collaboration? Do you think potential employees researching behavior for job opportunities will see the 2024 10% workforce removal? Or do you think behavior will showcase its Canada's Best Managed Company's fourth consecutive award win instead? Doubt behavior would resort to this sort of retaliation. Though to be safe, behavior, if you're watching this, this is from public information and press releases and multiple claims have been prefaced with allegedly. Now that that horrible piece of trivia is out of the way, what did True do to become detested by many YouTube DVD Survivor content creators? True created a Smurf account, or a brand new account to have the lowest matchmaking rating, to test the theory. True made a video with the Smurf account going against the new killer and imitating 99.9% .9 of YouTube Survivor content that True has seen. True then made a post saying the video with the Smurf account is similar to 99.9% .9 of YouTube Survivor content he's seen, and True said that he presumes many big YouTube DVD Survivor content creators Smurf to create content, and that proceeded to upset many big YouTube DVD Survivor content creators. Since True's wording can cause miscommunication and conflict to arise, here's a different way of wording what True was saying. In 99.9% .9 of YouTube DVD survivor content he's watched, True has noticed that many killers the content creators go against play as though they're newer killers. This would be unlikely to happen enough for the content creators to make videos of, if they're as high enough MMR as their playstyle illustrates. Okay, smurfing might be a bad way of calling this situation, except it does look very suspicious and makes players believe these content creators who purposefully smurfing or, the likelier of the two, de-ranking to go against easier and newer killers to make content around them. Unrelated, a different one of DBD's most popular content creators copyright struck a smaller upcoming DBD content creator's video because they criticized them. For context, the popular creator was told by someone that the smaller creator used 100% of their footage, so they copyright struck the smaller upcoming creator without supposedly looking at the video first. At best, it's negligence and daft. At worst, it's irresponsible and malicious. Surely the more popular and bigger creator learn from this. It's strange how they receive little controversy for this, while True's reputation is how it is. The smaller upcoming creator deleted their YouTube channel and deleted or rebranded on Twitch after this too. 
It's not as bad as it sounds though, because the research was done, and the smaller crater is kind of active on Twitter under a different handle, so it doesn't look like the more popular, bigger crater put the final nail in the coffin with the copyright strike. How come the more popular crater didn't face backlash while True does for much less though? There's one last thing you need to see. Um, we uh, we definitely helped it uh, get get more of the map. To say that we are the the main um, people who did it, blah blah blah. I don't think you can say that because you don't know, right? Uh, but I think at the very very start, we give it lots of exposure. Uh, there's definitely potential that you influence more people to buy it, which then caused like a snowball for sure. Uh, saying that we you know did uh, did it all, I think it's a bit. I don't think that's right. Um, but I do think we, I, I think it's naive to say we had no influence, right? Uh, at least at the start. <laughs> I've said this before, I'm, I'm surprised, you know, that my YouTube kind of lifted off because I, I always just use it as an archive. Like I kept it alive because YouTube got me into content creation. Um, and I'm a bit of a loyalist. So I was like, well, I've gone onto Twitch now and I don't have too much time. So I'll just kind of put up highlights and it just turned into something, but I never really expected YouTube to turn into something. So I'm uh, I'm very humbled by by it turning into something. Like I was literally here day one in the beta, talking to the devs, playing with the devs. New killers came out. The devs would literally play matches with me as a show match to show people, and now they just completely like it's fake as fuck. A lot, like, all of it. just like true help popularized Dead by Daylight on release opens up about being a loyalist to the point he wanted to discuss balance with the DBD developers then becomes a fog whisper only for the developers to kick him out of the program without ever saying why. Then, the majority of the community turns on him, many slandering and picking on him to opportunistically gain popularity. And for what? Tell me for what? Want to know the most heartbreaking part? My dream. But I so they might feel kind of a loyal, uh, like a loyalty to it as well, right? In that sense. It's one of my longest running games, I would say. It didn't, it didn't create me as a streamer though, uh, I think MKX was the one. Like a lost puppy looking for its owner who doesn't want it anymore, True possibly feels an unbridled sense of loyalty to the developers that turn their back on him. Do you think after going through everything True went through that most people would end up like True? Fuck no. Most people would become so much fucking worse. It's the irony of it, a crying shame. To be detested and slandered and picked on despite handling circumstances far better than the vast majority of people would, especially considering how this community is comprised of many disturbed and depraved people. This isn't how people become miserable, this is how fucking villains are made, yet trues the furthest thing from and gains no recognition for rising above darker impulses. True talent doesn't deserve this. True talent is the U2 of the Dead by Daylight community. Do you know what the true, not true, problem is of the DBD community? The people with disturbing and depraved usernames. Okay, half joking. To address the true problem, first, have you ever played video games that have toxic communities like League of Legends, for example? In those games, when someone is toxic to you, it feels like it's projecting frustration of the game onto you, right? The stuff they say can be bad, except it feels like it doesn't truly run that deep. Dead by Daylight's community toxicity, personally and subjectively speaking, feels the most personal of every multiplayer game I've played. People bullying other people because of sadism, racism, creepy and disturbing behavior, and the list goes on. Right, I go on some events and people are like, who is that? Bring Ots Darva instead. So it's not like I'm getting Popularity any kind of positivity from it in a sense instead i'm just getting a lot of hate a lot of death threats a lot of people <laughs> emailing me saying some really messed up like um racist and homophobic stuff you know people so bringing up like my stupid. parents who passed away a couple years ago in emails like there's no real positive i told you man these fucking miserable bastards like they just want to bring everyone down it's so weird coming from dead by daylight's true problem is how much the player base is toxic and disturbed as well as how much influence this portion of the player base has. A lot of people play on anonymous mode because they know how messed up the community is and are paranoid. Ask some anonymous mode players and some will give you that answer. Another unique aspect to DBD that makes the problem worse is DBD's asymmetric nature. 
or survivors versus one killer means if disturbed people want to play together to be sadistic to one killer, it's easy for them. There's an adage that goes, an individual is smart, people together are stupid, and even solo queue teammates might defend their survivor teammates rather than help the other side, of which there would only be one person. Us faces their mentality. Killers can be absolutely messed up people too, and even though one can argue them receiving toxicity means that they want to hurt others too, it doesn't excuse actions for anyone past a certain point. Forums related to Red Pill and Andrew Tate and the like and dumb shit are echo chambers that cause the people in them to deteriorate mentally. Based off research, it looks like the same issue exists within DBD Twitter, where toxic miserable people congregate and form echo chambers. These members then espouse the questionable beliefs when playing the game and then involve others. Now how they say some people in the world are NPCs, some people in the world are hostile mobs. DBD's player base seems to have a lot of people that would be the type to kill their spouse for life insurance money. It's probably a mistake to say most of the bad player base was born this way, and it's definitely a mistake to claim none of them will ever change. Very few people are born bad. Bad childhood or being bullied are common factors for why people become toxic. Some people want other people to suffer so that what happened to them doesn't feel so unfair, or, alternatively, in a naturally human way, they want other people to suffer because they don't want to feel alone in their suffering. Okay, enough with the negativity. So, will they stop being disturbed and depraved if they get a therapist? To claim this as a complete solution would be irresponsible and ignorant. A person needs to find a therapist they can trust, and having a bad first therapist can debilitate the perception of therapy. With what I'm about to say, I acknowledge it'll look stupid and I'll be made fun of for it, though, instead of insulting or judging or avoiding people, this will be a different approach. To those of you who want others to suffer so that your suffering doesn't feel unfair, or so you don't feel alone, I'm sorry for what happened to you, and that must have been really hard for you. I'd know, because I was like that once too. Fuck me up hearing someone tell me, I'm sorry you had to go through that alone, that must have been really difficult for you. Honestly, hearing that made me cry, and that's okay. With that being said, do know that when you're toxic, the world is the worst place for you in it, that it's possible to not be like this, it's possible to change. Do you think being in a group with people who enable and encourage your sadism and you theirs is good people to be around? Do you think people who are not disturbed or depraved would accept you for who you are in your current state? Do you think people who know what you do would want to be around you or associate with you? The answers to the last two questions would become the opposite if you rise above hurting others so that you can stop being so fucking miserable and start leading a fulfilling and rewarding life. If you start thinking you're responsible for the things going bad for you, within reason, don't blame yourself or you don't need to, then doesn't that mean you're responsible and capable of turning your life around? A good first step would be finding professional help or finding a support group. If you want even more reason to turn your life around, if you treat people badly enough times, they start to change for the worse and hurt others too, which continues the cycle. I'm not going to sell you a lie and tell you karma will reward you, Though, if people didn't hurt others because they were hurt and turned their lives around instead, don't you think much of the suffering you endure wouldn't have happened in the first place? To those of you who were born bad, or those who put down others for financial or influential gain, you and I both know I'd be an idiot for attempting to reason with you. To do so would be deft and naive. The only thing I'll say is that lifestyle has a major effect on how one's life will go, and leading a better positive lifestyle is far more rewarding and fulfilling. Emphasis on rewarding because that's the part that's enthralling to you. To everyone, and especially those that think people are incapable of change, inmates, including those in prison for life for the worst of crimes, run an open to the public retreat in Folsom, California State Prison. Three civilians went on a four day group retreat to the prison, and this was filmed in a documentary named The Work. If you think you know whether people can or can't change, then highly recommend watching clips of the documentary on YouTube if you can't watch the full documentary. It will be life-changing for some of you. If True reacts to this video, there is one burning question of yours I would like to answer. One thing you wonder about is people's fixations on white shirts.
and they get proper in depth with the shirt things. And to go with like, is this such a big thing right. for a lot and of people? I want to say this first. Them going it must in be. a direction. After speaking to some streamers and having a personal opinion, the consensus seems to be that having Twitch shirts is pragmatic and helpful for growth. If others see you wearing Twitch shirts, it might make them likelier to view Twitch since you have status and social proof is a very strong aspect of human psychology. And that same status might make them likelier to stay to watch the stream or return. Hearing some other creators talking about Twitch shirts, it sounds like it might be a desire for dedication and approval from the game company and from the game they dedicate so much of themselves to. Of those I've asked, and along with personal opinion, it indicates that the fondness for Twitch shirts is primarily out of pragmatism. Considering this video defended True, who behavior finds controversial, called that behavior for questionably moral behavior, and I was a jerk throughout the video too, it's unlikely I'll be eligible for Twitch shirts now. Though, a streamer who rages in tunnels and camps got Twitch shirts, and a woman who sells used clothing got Twitch shirts too, so what do I know about PR management? Now to be vulnerable to those who watch this far. Honestly, almost deleted this video because of fearing the negative reputation I'd get, though I'd rather have 500 of you who like me for who I am than having 10,000 who want me to be something else. Appreciate you. Cheese.